If you enjoy my art and want to support my content, why not become a patron? There are five brand new tiers for 2024, with lots of cool member access, as well as major discounts for all of my Etsy shop decals, blueprints, and SVG digital files. Your support will help me cover part of my art supply costs and will allow me to continue making diorama tutorials like this one. I want to give a huge thank you to Chris Jones for sponsoring this video. Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. Today we're doing the tutorial for one of the most iconic Star Wars movie sets in the history of all of the Star Wars. And I'm talking about episode four, Death Star Trash Compactor. Now this is gonna be part of the Mega Death Star diorama for me, that's why it has this specific look. You can modify this to be an easier build for you if you want to, but you can build the exact same thing after you finish watching this tutorial. So are you ready? My name's Frank Diorio. You're watching dioramaworkshop.com. Now my first Death Star trash compactor was designed for Celebration 3 back in 2005. However, it wasn't as deluxified as this is. It used the same figures because those came out in 2002. However, now we have the uh, lighting for the ceiling. We have the textures that match exactly the movie set. It took me over two months or so on and off. I had breaks, obviously, but it took me a long time to do all the movie comparisons, the movie stills, and try to match all the drips and the colors and all the different things as closely to the movie set as I could to give you the most accurate decals that I've seen online so far. Okay, here's what you're gonna need in order to make your Death Star trash compactor some white foam core, some black foam core, some tracing paper. This is only if you're doing the light up wall at the ceiling. You don't need to do this, but if you're doing the version I'm doing, you're gonna need the tracing paper. The trash compactor decals, trash compactor blueprints, these two are available on my Etsy store. A LED light strip if you're doing the lights, the scotch tape, pencil, X-Acto knife, X-Acto knife refills, scissors or a, a, or a little uh, Fisker. Um, you're going to need glue stick, hot glue refills, hot glue, a paintbrush and some paints only if you're not doing the decals. The way that I'm doing it is with decal skins, but if you want to bypass this because you don't have access to a printer, you will be able to use paints to get a similar effect. I'll show you a little bit about that later. You'll also need an X-Acto pen and some uh, pointy blade refills as well as a pencil sharpener for your pencil but for the life of me I can't find mine but it'll come in handy for you. In order to get your decals and blueprints all you have to do is go to my website dioramaworkshop.com go to the tutorials menu pull down and go to speed index click on there and it'll bring you to this page. Scroll down until you reach Star Wars A New Hope. Go to Mega Death Star Trash Compactor. Click under Decals over here, which will bring you to this page. Scroll down, you'll see the available decals in your set. And then you just have to click on this little PDF icon over here. Click on that. It brings you to my Etsy shop add to cart, and then you can pay and download. Back at the speed index, again under Mega Death Star Trash Compactor, this time go to Blueprints, click Yes, scroll down until you see the PDF over here, click on that, it brings you to my Etsy shop Blueprints, add to cart, purchase, and download. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, grab our blueprints. Now you're going to see that these blueprints contain five different pages. 
page number five is the um, templates. So I'll show you this later why it's a different color. So page one shows you the ceiling measurements over here. This is only if you're doing the LED ceiling because you want to do a version that's going to light up the scene so that it'll be even for the full wall. This is optional. So all these pieces are optional. Over here you have your floor base, ceiling top, and ceiling frame. On page two you have some of the basic measurements that we're going to be using in order to build our box and our doors. On page three is an example of all the identification of your pieces and then all of the measurements for your strips over here and how they all fit top view assembly over there. Page four is just a 3D front view identifying all of the pieces, how you have your optional side panels. These you don't have to put, neither do you have to do the, the C beams in the front, but it makes it look more finished if you place it inside of the uh, mega Death Star diorama that you're going to build if you're following what I'm doing. By the way, all the first four pages are printed on regular paper. When you get to page five over here, which is your templates, you're going to be printing these on sticker sheets if you have them. And uh, you need to print two pages because you need these for your right wall and for your left wall. Now, if you don't want to print on decal sheets, with the stencil, you can use the measurements found on page three of the blueprints and you will measure the 3.5, 3.2, three centimeters and all that, except that if you want to be more precise, it's easier to use the templates. So I'm going to start by just applying these right away and get them out of the way. So you want to peel the back of your decal skin. If you don't have full size decal paper like this, you can use plain paper and just use some glue stick in order to apply on the back and attach it to your foam core. So I'm just going to place this like this. Start in the center, move your way out to avoid bubbles. Center, center out, center out, just like that. Then I'm going to apply the second sheet over here. Peel this. Center down. Center out. Center. Center out. Back to the blueprints. Let us start with the floor base, which is black. The ceiling top, you're going to need a white foam core. This frame, you need black. So black, black. And then these strips over here, you're going to need a white foam core for these two as well. Let's start 22, 22 over here. Now I want 18, two times. Trace this, another 18, 18, connect. So I have my floor base and then my LED frame. Once I cut this out, I'll measure the 1.5 that I have to go all the way around over here. So now I have the ceiling and the side frames that I have to do in white. Measure 18 over here, 18 at the base. Connect this, 22 and 22 over here. That's my ceiling top. And then I need my frames to Four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight. Then this one, I need to measure 22 over here. And then I'll go to here, do 22 as well. Connect this one. And then join the 22. And then I need 17 on this piece over here and 17 at the bottom. Connect those like this. Okay, so I have my C 
D frame and my A and B. So that's all the pieces needed on page one of the blueprint. This is just for the assembly later on. I need two 36 and a half centimeter by six centimeter strips over here. 36.5, 36.5 is over here. So I said six and another six, which is 12. I connect this strip over here. So six and six, 12. Okay, so this is left and right. And now 33.5 is the common. So 33 and a half, 33 and a half. I said 17, 17, and then 22. And then 22, I said. This is the front C, and this is the left side. And this one I had to cut two, I completely forgot about that. So I'm gonna continue this line. Now I'm gonna do my 17. 17 comes here, just at the edge. 33 and a half, so 33.5 is what I want. 33 and a half is this. Okay, so this is excess. And I said this was left, so this would be the right wall. I have a space that I can use to cut the optional side panel bases there. So seven by five. The five was just slightly short. In your blueprints is gonna have the correct number, but what you see in the video is the five centimeters, so don't let this uh, distract you. What we want is two seven by 5.5 centimeters for the right and left feet. So I'll go here and do my fives. So five, five is 10. That's the extent of my math skills. <laughs> five and five, 10. I don't remember anything I learned in math and chemistry and physics and everything in high school. I remember all the song lyrics from when I was growing up, but don't ask me. Basic math is terrible. I'm so bad at it. Okay, so I have that, which is the fives, and now I need seven. So from here, seven, here, seven. So this will be foot right and foot left. Okay, I have my, my two walls, which are over here. My C wall, which is that one. My optional side panels over here and then my left feet, these two pieces. All that's left is the door. And in order to get the exact measurement of the door, what you want to do is you want to apply the decal first and then cut out the shapes. So since the sheet is all uh, measured out, I'm going to go back to this over here. Now I'm going to find my door, page 16. Peel that. Okay, I don't want bubbles, so let this fall naturally and then move upwards and then towards the opposite side. So there's no bubbles, clean contact. Make sure that there's no dirt on your foam core so that you're not gonna have anything trapped underneath over here. The only thing I need now is to cut my C beams, four pieces of 21 by one and seven by one six times. Okay, so I'm gonna measure four centimeters over here. I feel my glasses. I've been using the wrong glasses all this time. Oh my Lord, I've been using my computer glasses instead of my readers. Oh, what a difference this makes. Hopefully the, all the past measurements are gonna be good. <laughs> oh my God. One centimeter, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Go to eight. Okay, now I'm going to measure on the other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I said 21. So 21 is here. And I'll draw my line over here. And after 21, two times is 42. So I can go to 42 over here. So 42 and 21. And then a straight line 
across here. And that's my four C beams, the long ones. And now I need seven centimeters times six. Might as well just do seven, 14, and 21. This over here, 21, 14, and seven. Okay, it's time to cut our pieces. Get your X-Acto knife. Make sure to get a new blade if you haven't already. The foam core is the killer of the blade. When you go to cut, remember to have your blade 90 degrees to the table. You don't want it angled like this. You want a perfect slice down the line. And when you cut, try not to cut at a point like this. You want the knife blade lowered as close to ground level over here so that you'll have the maximum surface of the blade touching and you'll get a cleaner and even cut by cutting this way than if you were doing it just pointy like that. Okay, I'm gonna start with this. Okay, I can do this rough just to trim around. The same thing here, I'll just do rough. Put this away for later use. I'm gonna put these aside for now. Let's grab my big foam core with all the measurements. I have a nice cut over here that slices this in half, which will make manipulation of this easier. Slice that. Now these might not match exactly the way that uh, you did your measurements. You might have been using scrap foam core pieces and stuff. Just make sure that again, you're not wobbling your knife like this. You wanted a nice extension down and then go all the way across like this. That's what's important. Press down hard on your ruler. It helps if you use a cork ruler, you're not sliding around as much on your foam core. This makes a cool cat toy, believe it or not. Okay, one, two, three. This is my rear and my left and right side over here. Cut along that. Gives me these two pieces. One, two, okay. Now I can break this off. I'm gonna keep this for another time. No. Slide that. This is my top. I don't need this. Okay, and then this. Okay, we're almost done the pieces. Remember for the frame, I said I have to measure 1.5 all the way around, and then we have to cut out the center there. 1 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5. The line in the corner, then I'm going to push down, lower, and then pull. And I'm going to stop before I reach this tip here, because if I go straight, I'm going to cut into the frame, and I don't want to do that. I want to have a perfect frame. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the other side, grab a scrap foam core so that the ruler can lay on it. Start at the end over here, pointy tip down, lower, and then connect with what I cut earlier. I don't know if you could see this, but it'll give you a clean cut on the other side. I want to do the same thing all the way around. You just want to keep this corner clean. Push down, lower, pull. Push down, lower, and pull. Okay, so now I'm going this way. Press down, connect. See how you get the perfect corner. You're not having any cuts that go into the frame portion over here. If you feel your blade is starting to get dull, find one of these grooves here, aligned to the metal, put your hand over, press, and it'll pop off just like this. Always find an old container, put the old blade inside like that. 
press down, connect, press down, press down, lower. And I think that's all of them. Your frame now should pop out really easily, just like this. We have all our measured cut pieces. Now we're gonna move on to cut the final templates over here. You wanna cut along here first because this will separate it in two. Now if you're slightly off, and when I say slightly off, I mean uh, by hair, okay? Uh, that's okay because these skins or these uh, templates are gonna be covered by skins. This is just to help you because even though they look the same, they're all different heights, okay? Some by 0.2 millimeters and such. So if you measure them with a pencil, it's a little more tricky. By cutting them along the colors, then you know that you're gonna match exactly to the design that I created. You now have your left and right wall strips. Okay, now your decal sheets contain 21 pages. Let's go through them. Not all of them are to be used for the project at the same time. There are some variants that uh, I included so that you can have the option of the way you want to do it. So if we go to page one, this is your bottom of your wall C. All of these are printed on decal sheets, by the way. Page two is the top and it fits like this. And then you can see that this is where your door is going to fit over here. Page three, same thing. Left wall bottom. Page four, left wall top. Page five, right wall bottom. Page six, right wall top. Okay, now on page seven, you have a folding guide. And here are two of your strips that go on your wall C. And then these are the strips that go on the side of the door. Then page eight is the beginning of your strips. This is for the wall left, number one and eight. They're identified in the circles over here. This is your strip for your wall C, center wall. So your pages eight to 15 are your wall strips over here. And then on page 16, you'll come to your door. Now we want a 3D illusion door. So this is the way I'm making it, where this piece of foam core goes on top of here, this goes on top of here. And so it'll create a three layer effect. If you don't want to go through all these steps and having to cut out all of the pieces of foam core and you feel more at ease in applying one sticker, this is where page 17 comes into effect, okay? This is an optional door, flat 3D effect look that I created for you. You have a version that has the side lights over here and a version that doesn't in case you wanted to add LED lights that blink yourself. If you don't want to do a wall C that is textured and you just want a flat decal like the flat doors, you just need to do page 18, which is the illusion wall and page 19 over here is the illusion wall with the door included. So then when you place it on your piece of foam core, you don't have to do the whole constructions of adding the beams and doing the full stickers. This is just like the easiest way to get it, the effect that still looks really cool from far away. Now we're getting into optional, which is the side panels, which will go on each side of the trash compactor. These you don't need to do, but I designed it so that it'll fit with the Mega Death Star diorama build. Same thing with over here, your ceiling connectors, optional. You can use the version style that you want, the beams, the neon graphics, or just plain trash compactor style beams here. Okay, if you're doing the optional LED ceiling front connector, you're gonna need to use a poster board which is thinner than foam core, but a little thicker than paper. And you're gonna cut a 33.2 centimeter by three centimeter high piece. So 33.2 brings me over here. Okay, and then three centimeters is this. 
three centimeters brings me to this. Now you don't have to do this, but it's a nice little addition I'm gonna show you. If you do decide to put this at the bottom, you need to do a poster board in order to stick this on. I'll do the same three centimeters, oops. 21 centimeter. Okay, just in case, a little bit of glue stick as a precaution. Peel, just align this, just like that. With the poster board, your decal is just slightly more solid than just paper, but it's still rigid enough to be placed as a flat surface. The one I want to use is these beams over here to do the cross sections. When you're cutting decals, you don't have to lower as much. It doesn't matter if you have it pointy. Put this away. I could always use it for some other project. Before we put it on the poster board, I want to just take my black Sharpie and put some black lines at the top. Since this is for aesthetics, black looks nicer than white. Don't put any on the ends though you're going to overlay that a black line will not look nice it'll give you like a dark line in the middle that you don't have anywhere else right here like this and then here we're going to start with the left side put a little bit of glue stick in case i want to manipulate it once it's applied if i place it crooked peel align this over here in the corner keep my finger pressed there and then i will align it with the edge over here now we're going to do the right side that's going to give us the full length that we need a little bit of glue here as well peel technically if i place this in the corner like so and i line this at the bottom this should align perfectly over here and it does now i just press that down there see you can't see the seam over here because i didn't put any black if i had put the black sharpie you would have seen a line over here it wouldn't have been as nice i'm going to use my ruler i'm just going to trim that excess little black there that annoys me a little bit press down hard on the ruler you don't want the decal to slide around. Reapply the Sharpie on the back here because I trimmed and removed the black that we had put before. Always the decal facing outside. If your hand slips and you go like this, it's better to have the Sharpie line on here than across the surface of your decal. Now that I know that my edges are connected, I can put some black Sharpie on the end here. And then the same thing on this end now, just like that. Now we have the tedious process of having to cut out all of our decal strips over here. For page two, you only want to cut out the sides over here. Don't cut this out yet. Don't cut out this part yet. Wait till the two pieces are stuck on the foam core, then we cut it out. You want to identify your pieces before you start cutting. Left, bottom, left, top, right, bottom, right, bottom, right, top. This one's a little different. You're going to cut horizontals first, and then you'll use Fiskars to cut along the side edges there. Save this for later. It's going to help you with your cutting and folding. For the big beams, the same thing. Cut along horizontally, and then on the ends, and then the rest you cut with the Fiskars. If you're doing your illusion wall instead of the full construction that I'm doing, then you would cut these pieces out 
and then assemble them with this at the bottom, your door on the top of this, and then this at the top, and it would give you your entire wall. Since I'm not doing it this way, I'm going to save these for another time. Now I am doing the optional side panels and what I want to do is I want to identify them before I cut them. This will be left bottom, left bottom. Don't press too hard because you don't want it to go onto the sticker, like do an impression on the sticker. Right top, left top, right button. Since I'm doing the 3D door, I'm going to need to cut out these strips as well. Now we need to trim and clean these up. We have four long ones, and then we have these three that have two on each for six. So what we're gonna do is that we're going to use our little guide here. You will see that on your guide, you have one end here that has a circle, and that represents your circle identification over here. The other end is just the plain tip of the edge over there. So what we want to do is that you want to fold along the green dots, but you want to cut along the red lines only. I want to make four cuts along the red here. One, two, three, and four. And stop where the folding line goes. So grab your end that has this over here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to go one like this and then you stop right at the corner. Same thing here. You go here and then place it where it aligns, where you think that the fold is there. See where the end of my scissor is? And then you just go across there. Same thing here. There and there. Now once those are done, then you can go and trim off where you see the white. And then here, you trim off the white at an angle. And this is what you get. For the other side, you're going to cut along these four ends. Okay, do you see where there's a triangle here in the pattern? So where your triangle stops over here, that's where your cut ends. So for this corner, you start here, align, and go to the triangle. Same thing here. A line, go to the triangle and stop at the triangle. And then you're going to cut along this dark line over here. And you're going to stop where the triangle is. Just about there. Same thing here. Then you're going to remove the white paper. And this is what your piece looks like. Okay, so now we're going to have to repeat that on all of the six pieces. For the long one, it's exactly the same. Now for the fat pieces, same principle, cut along the edges over here and then here you're going to go straight until you reach the fold line which is where the dark ends. So if I cut here and stop here at the corner, stop on the inside as well. You match this and then this angle stops where this discoloration is. And this is the thickness of your foam core. Then I'm going to cut this off over here. Then cut this, and then trim this piece there. This is what we want our cut to look like. Now we're going to do the same thing on the other side. And there you go. This is what your cut looks like. Now we just have to repeat the same thing on all the other pieces. I think you want a time lapse. This is when it was fun at celebrations, when you have a hundred fans helping you cut one piece each, then it's done in two minutes. You don't have all these tedious tasks. And we're done. We have all the left and right door beams, the full horizontal beams, and we have all of the left and right wall strips. Now we have to fold all of these in order to wrap them around the foam core. Okay, let's start with these. Looking at our guide where you have the circle matching your identification over here, 
this is where you fold along the green lines. So one fold all along here and then one fold in the middle. You take this and you bend it all along here, this way. Start slowly and work yourself into a tight 90 degree bend like this, okay? What you're gonna wanna do after is you're gonna see where there's a darker color over here. That is the equivalent of your green fold over here. And that is actually the thickness of your foam core. On the opposite end is where you have the little triangle folds where you're gonna be folding at an angle, just like this. So you're gonna be folding in a straight line here, but then at the corners, you're gonna be folding at an angle and then another straight line over here for the thickness. So this folds down first, all the way down like this. And can you see the two little triangles there? That's where you're gonna fold them over like that. Now the reason that you have these little triangles here is because on the end where this side connects, your thickness is gonna be cut at a 45 degree angle here. And so that is why these little triangle pieces are going to wrap around the cut end and the other end, which is just folded normal without triangles, goes on the normal end over here. It sounds confusing a little bit the way I'm explaining it now, but when we go to apply it, you'll understand a lot better. So before we go into time lapse, let me explain how the other ones are folded first. Okay, for the long one, it's exactly the same thing. You're gonna fold it over here like this to create a straight line. On the back, you see it like this. See the straight line? And then the center one is what you're gonna be folding over here where the darkness changes a little bit in order to give you this little hook like that. So the same way you did the smaller one, but on both sides. So again, you're gonna be folding along here. So just bend all the way across to create a straight line like that. And then see the demarcation over here. You're gonna use that as your guide. And then for these, it's exactly the same thing. You're gonna be bending in a straight line here and then where the color changes, this is gonna be your fold. This is your foam core edge. Press slightly against the first line. These will fold over very easily because they're smaller. Then find your other color and do the same thing. A soft fold first and then you'll pinch it harder. This gives you your thickness of your foam core so that your foam core will look like the color of the trash compactor and not a black piece of the original color of the foam core. On the other side, the same thing. Fold slightly, fold these, just pinch this slightly. Once your side folds are done, then you just have to fold along your horizontal lines on all the beams. So here you find your dark line. You're gonna fold slowly. This is the foam core thickness over here. Now we're gonna do the same thing at the bottom. First you want a soft fold, and then you're gonna do the same thing for the top. For the wide ones, it's the same folds as the small ones, except because it's longer, it's a little trickier in the folding. Keep one finger in the back here as a barrier so that you can fold this over like that. You could always use a piece of foam core if you prefer, and then you'd be able to fold this around it as well. So then the same thing here, you're gonna just follow the crusty edge, do the same thing over here. Depending on which beam and strip it is, the textures are all different. I did my best to go frame by frame in the movie and really paint the streaks and all of the drippings and everything to match where they appeared in the film. Okay, so I have my bend like this. Here is exactly the same thing. Slow memory over here like this, and then at the thickness of the foam core. And then for the top, 
is the same thing. This is what your folds look like for these long strips. Okay, now I think we're ready for time lapse. And we are done. Here are all the folds that we're going to need in order to wrap our skins around our foam core pieces. Okay, so that took a little longer than I had expected, but uh, at least the tedious part is out of the way. Now it's the more fun part of wrapping the skins around the foam core pieces. And once that's done, the best part of it is just hot gluing all the beams onto the backgrounds and that's where it really comes together and it comes together really fast. So let's move on to the skins. I'm having the hiccups and I'm hearing the cats wanting some food. <laughs> oh my God, Frank, maybe it's time for a break. <coughs> now that all our decals are folded, we can start wrapping them around our foam core pieces. Now the easiest are the main left and right walls, okay? And the full strips for the front C wall. The only thing we have to change for the small pieces, the strips that are on each side of the door, is we need to do a small 45 degree angle cut on the ends of only one of the sides. So that you don't get confused, take your pencil and do your little 45 degree markings over here. It's best to use a new blade for this. Okay, what we want to do is we want to extend the blade. We want to place it over here and then like if you were playing a violin, you're going to pull this across while you press down. So we start like this and then all the way down like this. Now, if your blade isn't angled, you should have a nice 45 degree cut like this. Okay, we're gonna repeat on all the pieces. Okay, we have all our angles over here. We're able to start wrapping. Now, remember these triangle folds over here? That's what will be folding over here. I'll draw a little line here so you could see. You're gonna be taking this piece with the cut at the top and you're gonna be placing it over like this. You're going to align the top of your angle cut with your fold over here. And then this is going to go along the outside edge of your actual piece. And then when you fold this over here, it's going to look like a Kit Kat bar. Your two triangles align like this. And this will give you a nice colored edge over here so you don't see the black. And then when you fold this over, then you have a nice seam on both sides. On the other end, since there's no cut angle and it's flat, you're gonna start by bending one side and then the other side over it like this so that you get your nice seams here. And then you'll be folding this over and then this will flip to the back side like this and it'll give you a perfect end cap like that. Okay, let's start with our six little ones. Now, since all of these are the same, you don't have to match them with your identification over here. If you're not using decal sheets, use glue stick. Never use hot glue. 
to attach decals. And even if you are using decal sheets, I still like to use glue stick to add an extra coat of lubricant, which will allow you to move your piece around to the perfect, perfect spot, which if you didn't put the glue, the contact between the sticky sheet or sticker sheet, I should say, and the foam core cardboard over here would be an instant bond. And if you try to move it, you might tear some of the, this paper or even worse, tear the sticker. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue over here at the top. You can use your X-Acto pen like this and try to pry it open. Be careful because of all these little cuts there, you don't want to make rips. It becomes very fragile. A line over here and then you want to wiggle this until it reaches the front there. And this is where, because of the glue stick, you can move it slightly like this. So I'm going to start folding this first. Now you can go and do a tighter fold, okay? From your memory, use your nail, create a nice 45 degree angle, and then bring it forward like this. You want this to be flat. You want to try to avoid having bubbles at the top here. Now I can go over here and bring this flap down. See how it folds over? Now take this, you're gonna fold it at the angle, which will make it go over this piece. Now I can fold this over, make sure it's flat over here. So press your nail down. You could even use your pencil if you wish, and you can make sure that you have a nice tight 45 degree angle here. The thickness of your foam core now has a texture instead of having the black over here. Now I want to take the next piece and then start folding that over. Bring your pencil like this, like a violin. Bring it as you pull back, move it sideways, okay? And then you do it in the other direction. You could use your nail technique as well if you don't have a pencil or if you don't want to use your pencil. Now make sure it touches all the way across over here. Fold this back a little bit. Now we can fold this over like so. Fold your little front flap, fold over this triangle now, okay? Just like this. Now you have your two little triangles here. This one's a bit darker, so it's hard to see, but the triangle is there and here. Now you're able to flip this over, make contact with the rear, make sure that it's flat along here, okay? Now you can go back to this side. You're gonna fold this over to make a nice 90 degree bend over here and see how it follows the width over here. And now you can fold this along the back. So you now have a nice clean edge over here with your identification circle. Now let's finish at the angle here. Just fold this over and you'll notice that it's gonna go and follow the angle. And then whatever is left over here is what you flip underneath. Now you get a nice clean edge on your angle and you have a nice clean edge on your flat side. Now you wonder why these angles are so important. I'll show you that when we get to install the door. Let's repeat with all the other pieces. Okay, your six little pieces are finished. Now we can move on to the big one. So I'm just gonna put a little bit over here. Now we're gonna peel. Be careful again of these ends over here. When you peel, you don't wanna have these like tear off, okay? So just peel carefully at first. Then it's easy to peel all the way. A line or foam core in the center fold. Hey, that sounds like a Jay Giles song. <laughs> Those of you old enough to remember that. With the glue, you're able to slide it around a little bit. See, like that? The alignment seems good on this end. When you turn it around, that's when you're going to see it wraps pretty much along the line here. So now I'm going to slowly make a sharper memory. Bring it down. These pieces are 
longer, so it's a little trickier. Okay, now I use my nail technique to put into a more precise 90 degree angle. And at the same time, I'm pressing down on the edge over here so that I'm not having any bubbles. When that's done, I'm going to pull on here and then wrap it around this way. And then I'm going to do the same thing moving towards the top. And then I'm going to do the same thing moving towards the other end. This way by pulling and wrapping, I'm assuring that there's no air pockets over here. If you use your nail to press along the edge over here, then you're making sure that it's even flatter. Okay, then fold from the outside towards the end. Press with your nail again, and you have nice 90 degree corners on both sides. Now we want to do the same thing over here. Start by pulling and folding, okay? Bring that loose memory that we did, turn it into a tighter memory, like this with your fingernail. Always press and go out, so you're kind of like dragging it towards the outside. Use your nail here to get a tighter connection, and then start pulling and folding, okay? Pull and fold towards the end, center. Now we have a nice connection. If you have slight imperfections over here, it doesn't matter as much because that'll be glued against the wall. You can just press down against that and let the decals do its magic where they'll connect the pieces together. Now we just have the ends to do. Fold first, fold second, fold this over, and then fold in the back. Do the same thing opposite end. Fold first, fold second, fold this over and then fold this. And then you can squeeze a little bit with your fingers. And it's as easy as that. Now let's do the other ones. There we go, one, two, three, four. Put these aside. The important thing is to identify number six. It could be right or left, it's the same dimension. So number six, strip number six. We will flip this to the dark side. Some glue stick, never hot glue. Same thing as the other. We want to be careful about these two little flaps there. You don't want to tear those off when you're peeling. Okay, so be very careful. Once you cleared the first area, you should have no trouble peeling. I want the parallels over here and the edge to match. So now we're ready to start sticking it to the spine. Again, center, move your way out. Do your nail technique or your pencil, violin. Now we're ready to place it on the bottom. What you're going to be doing, starting in the center, you're going to be pulling, stretching, and then pressing down over here so that it touches this zone. Nail technique, just to make sure it's really flat against the edge. Press and up. Press, up, and stretch. Press and stretch. Press, up, and stretch. Now go in the other direction. Up, stretch. Up, stretch. You should now have a perfect 90 degree corner on each side. Repeat over here. You can pull a little bit over here and then stretch it over the spine. Put it down, center, pull. Can you see how it's tighter here when I'm pulling as opposed to there? Pull and then apply down. So pull, pull. Nice. Round the corner, stretch it. Pull this backwards a little bit to expose the thickness. Then you're going to just take this, wrap it against the edge on that side. Repeat on this side. Okay. Now you can bring this over. Make sure to press it against the end. 
then you're able to pull this up as you bend it and you have a perfect edge. Same thing for this end. Pull this back a little bit, expose the spine, bring this down, bring this down, bring this onto the side and then pull tight against itself. In the back you will now have the identification number as well as the direction that your strip has to be placed. You want the oil drips to be dripping down. Are we ready for the time-lapse music? Peel, be careful, see how I tore this decal over here? You want to try to avoid that. For number eight, flush here and flush at the top. Number one, same thing, except at the opposite end. Flush at the bottom and flush on the rear over here. Oh, 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 look at this big mistake that just happened. No! My finger got stuck to the decal sheet here and when I pulled my finger off, it tore this. Let's hope that we can fix it and apply it where it won't show. Now that all the beams and strips are done, we can move on to a less tedious task. Tedious task? It's almost a tongue twister, my lord. A tedious task and start applying the wall decal skins. So the core structure of the trash compactor is the rear seawall, which has the door, and then the right or left and right, I should say. We identified our pieces before we cut them, right? Left top will go there, left bottom, right top, right bottom, and then we have our doors over here. The door top, C wall, and C bottom over here. Now these will act as background textures or background skins, and it simulates the 3D, okay, and the dirt that you see in the movie set, and then your beams, that we just apply the texture wrap, we are going to apply these later on in the proper position. So WR would mean right seven. So you'd count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and this one would be glued over here on top of it, and you'd get the three dimension when you're gonna be placing it together. But I'm getting ahead of myself with this. So now what we wanna do is we just wanna glue these pieces together and cut the door out. We're gonna start with the bottom decal skin. You're gonna see that it measures exactly the width of the C piece that we cut out. And what we wanna do is make it flush on either side over here, and then we'll know that it's perfectly aligned. And when we place the other one, which overlaps a little bit at the top here, there won't be any mismatch. I want to put a little bit of glue stick here like I did on the beams and strips so that I'll be able to manipulate this in case it falls onto the surface. I'm exaggerating here, but if it would fall like this, then you wouldn't be able to reposition it because if you'd start peeling this off, it would all tear and it would all get stuck on this. So with the lubrication of the glue stick, we're going to be able to reposition it perfectly. I'm gonna take my pencil. I'm just gonna make a, a slight line so I know where to stop my glue stick. Okay, let's apply the glue stick. 
Try to get the corners and you want to have a nice smooth surface of glue stick. Don't want to have any globs that will cause bubbles. I can peel this. I know that this is the bottom. I'm going to align at the corner. I'm going to slightly press here just so that it doesn't wiggle, but then I'm going to keep this up and I'm going to let this fall and I'm going to see if it touches flush to the other corner. There's not much of a gap. It works really well. So now I'm going to start pressing here, up, and then in this direction. Center towards this, center towards the top, center, center out. It's pretty flush. Flatten it, make sure there's no air bubbles. Now we have to place the top piece. Now this will overlap a little bit over here, and that's fine because these little strips that we wrapped earlier, these are going to go on top over here and it's going to hide the seam between the two pages. And now we're going to align it with this corner over here. Always do a dry run first. It's always a good idea. So I see that my piece matches the width and then if it goes down, it'll overlap a little bit over here and fall perfectly there as well. And my door should align pretty close over here as well. Some glue stick, peel this. I want to apply this at the top, align it as close as I can. Now I'm going to lift one of the sides. I'm going to lift this side here because it's further away from me. And I'm going to bring this down only in the corner to see if it matches the edge. And it does. And does it match the door? It does. So now I can press a little more firmly over here, bring it out, center out center out like this, center out, and then I'll let this fall as my hand goes over it. We now have the C wall where we will be applying all of our strips over here once we finish all of the wall decals. Let this dry a little bit and we'll move on to left and right wall and then we'll come back and cut this out. Your right and left pieces are identical so it doesn't matter which you apply. Find your two left pieces like we did before. I'm just going to align it in a dry run. It looks like it's pretty clean over here. Do a little mark. If you look at one of the strips, there's like a shadow illusion at the bottom. And then you have like these nails, these textures of dirt that are at the top over here. So you know that this is the bottom glue stick all over. You don't have to use the Uhu brand, but I do like that. That's one of the better brands I find. Peel this, find my bottom again, which is over here. So I'm going to align corner tip. See, I'm able to pull it off without ripping because I put the glue stick on. Keep this lifted. Someone sending me a message. <laughs> then bring this down. It should arrive flush to the other corner, and it does. So now we can press stronger, press up, center, up, center, up, and then let this fall down as you press, center, up, and then let this fall to the surface. We have the bottom piece in place for our left wall. Now we just need to do the same thing over here. Make sure that your decal is touching at the top onto the foam core. This with the light accent is what we want to align over here. Glue stick all the way there. You can apply some over here, but don't go further than half of this because you don't want any glue going onto your exposed decal there. Peel. I have my edge there in the corner. That looks good. Okay. Then I can bring it down. And then here is flush. Center out, center out, center out. Don't worry about your seam here because this will be covered by one of your strips. We can identify this as left. Put this aside. We can do the right wall now. Bottom, dry run. Draw line over here, apply my glue stick over here, peel this. So I want to align over here as flush as I can on this side and at the bottom. I'm going to bring it down just a tad. 
keep this lifted. I'll bring this down, out, center, center all the way down. And then let it fall. There's a little bit of exposure here. We'll trim that later. Now we're going to place this piece. Remember, highlight at the top. We'll align this with this edge and then we'll trim off whatever excess is on this side. A little bit of glue stick, peel. I want to align in my corner over here and then I'm going to bring this down and make sure that it's aligned flush here, which it is. And then this should match with the ceiling, which it does. Start pressing, center up, center right, center up, center right, and then let this fall. And then this one would be right. We can now let our left and right walls dry a little bit. We'll now move on to cutting the inside of our door. So we want a perfect cut here. We don't want our X-Acto to go into here. If you do go past, it would be okay because the beam is going to come and overlap over this. But you want to try and keep it as clean and straight a line as possible. What I want to do is trim it right where the white is. Fresh blade is always best. Do like I did for the ceiling frame. I'm going to poke down, then I'm going to lower the knife and then I'm going to go all the way across and I'm going to stop just before I reach here. Then we're going to flip this around and then I'll poke here and go down until we connect. Poke down, go across. Poke, lower and drag. My connection is now complete. Now we're going to do the same thing over here. Poke, lower, poke, lower, connect. Now I'm going to do sideways across in the same fashion. Poke, lower, stop, poke, lower, connect. Poke, lower, across and stop. Poke here, connect. Now if I turn it around, I should see that all the connections are perfect. By pressing slightly in the back, I'll be able to start popping this open just like that. If you use the new blade, you should have all nice clean surfaces over here. Now our door that we cut out is going to be fitting right inside here. But I'm getting ahead of myself because I don't want to place this in case this bends. I want to glue all the door together. So let's do that now. Now I made it easy for you. I aligned all of the tops and bottoms. So you have to do only one cut over here. Do the same thing on this end. Now we cut the three individual doors. You have your three pieces here. Now remember, this is optional. If you don't want to go through the trouble of cutting all of these and you feel insecure with the level of building that you are, you can always use just a flat door like this and just stick this one decal on a piece of foam core and you'll get the same result with the illusion of the 3D but without the depth when you look at it in 3D perspective. So we want to remove these inside white pieces there. I'm going to start on the sides using my knife. And then for the curves, I'm going to be switching to my X-Acto pen, which is easier because of the pointy tip. Make sure that your blade is not dull. So I'm going to just do another little snap there. You want to try to remove the white. You're going to start just after the curve. And you're going to stop before it starts again. You just want a straight line. Now for this side, remember to press hard with your ruler so that it doesn't slide. Don't worry, if you make a mistake, you could always reprint and start again. Okay, so I have a new blade on this. Be careful not to poke yourself or cut yourself. You don't want that. When you feel that you're starting to be in an unnatural position, stop, spin this around and then continue. I'm going to start and I'm not poking all the way through. I'm just going along the white part. See, I'm stopping. I'm turning. I'm continuing like this. Go slow. Try to match as close as you can to the white curve there. Now you'll see that it hasn't gone all the way through. The side ones have, but not here yet. Now I'm going to do another pass a little bit deeper. Try to keep your knife not angled. Just keep going the same spot. Once you turn it, you're able to see 
where you're missing connections. I'm missing a small connection over here, so I can just go like this on it. And then here I'm pretty much got it pat. Don't poke it out yet, because you want to do the other end here first. Go this way, start turning along the white as close as you can. You want to try to avoid leaving any white on the frame of your door there. You want that chopped off. I'm going to do it again, pressing a little harder each time. Let's look behind and you see we almost have the connections. This one's pretty close. It's pretty good. There's a slight gap over here that needs to just be fixed there. It already popped and you can see that this is ready to come out just like that. Don't worry if you have some little imperfections here. You're going to be putting a skin here and we're going to be covering the edges with the black Sharpie like we usually do for the Death Star. When you see this, it's because your blade is starting to get dull. So I'm going to change blade, put this aside, move on to this one. We're going to do the same thing. Cut along the edges. When your wrist starts feeling weird, flip this around and then continue. You don't need to do it all in one motion. I have just a little gap here that's not cut. Okay. You can see we're pretty much all caught up here. Now you can poke this out just like that. See, you'll have some defective edges over here, but that's fine. It'll all be covered with the decals. Now to give you an idea of what we're making, the centerpiece goes on top here. And this frame goes on top here. So when it's all glued together, you have a three-dimensional door, just like in the movie. Pretty cool, eh? So don't worry about the black edges here. We're going to be adding some brown skin over here to make it match the look of the doors. See how you have a white line over here? When you take your black Sharpie and you just go along the edge like this, do you see how your black line now looks nicer than a white line? We want to do the same all the way around to hide all those white edges. Always the sticker side facing out so that if you make a gesture with your hand with the pen that goes in the wrong direction, you'll be drawing on the back side that won't be shown. You don't want to be making a scratch like this. Well, that sounds more like a poopy sound, doesn't it? You don't want to make a scratch on the decal side. I'm sure I'm going to have a lot of people in the comments saying that's the caca sound. <laughs> it was subconscious, I promise you. And we don't need to do this one because it's covered with this piece over here. Now, if you wanted to do LED light ups, you would be able to make holes in this and then put lights, but I'm not doing that in mine. I tried in the test and it's just too small and it makes a big mess because the circles are too close together. So if one of you figures out how to do it, let me know and then I'll maybe modify this in an update video. I'm going to do the same thing for the side doors here. I'm going to do a quick black line on the inside. In order to assemble our door, we first have to do the skins on the inside. Find our little strips and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to apply the black here. Do you see the difference? How the black Sharpie makes a better blend than the white? Make sure that your inside is clean there. I'm going to do a little mark over here with my pencil, just so I know where to start the decal. And take my glue stick. Now I'm going to use the side of my glue stick because I can't fit it this way. You want to avoid putting glue stick on your decal front over here. You only want the glue stick in the center. So you just do the thickness so we can manipulate it the way we did with the beams. I'm not going to peel it all. Press it along here first, then press it in the corner. If it starts separating at the curve over here, just press it back like this to make sure that it stays put. Then you're going to continue to make it go across. Peel this a little more. I'm going to press it against this curve, making sure that it's nice and tight and that there's no loose ends. Press down. I'm going to peel a bit more. Now I'm just going to go like this over here. I'm going to finish peeling it. Go down on the top over here. Make sure it reaches the corner. 
and you always want it centered with your thickness of the foam core. Now we're coming up to where it started. Align this flush. Make sure that this corner is still nice and tight around the bend. Then I'm going to bring it down on top of the piece where it started. If you have excess like this, don't pull it because you might do a bigger tear. I'm going to use my Fiskars and I'm just going to do that. Now, what I want to do is I just want to make it flush over here. You're placing the pencil at a slight angle so that it'll wrap over here instead of a sharp 90 degrees and it'll really blend your little decal strip that we just did. Do that all the way around. And because we put black on the side of the paper, you see there's no white shining through. The black from the edges that we did with the Sharpie make a nice blend over here all the way around. We are going to trim the long piece with the light panels. If you make a mistake, there's some extra spare ones on the decal sheet over here. Now that we place the inner strip skin over here for the edge of the door, we need to place these two little light boxes. But to know where to put them, we're gonna take our layer three. We're gonna place this on top. If you wanna know which one is the bottom, it's the one with this longer drip here, and you can see that these nails, again, are at the bottom of this circle. The blue goes on the left side of the door, and the red goes on the right side of the door. The big lights go at the top. We want them to be both aligned with the bottom of this horizontal door emboss over here. So the blue from the bottom here going down, and the red from here going down. So align your pieces like this. Since your little light panels will be hiding this strip that we just placed, you can take your pencil and just make a mark at the bottom over here, and then the same thing on the other side for your red. Just a small pencil mark like this. So take a scrap of paper. We're gonna start with the red one. A bit of glue stick. I just want to place it here on the bottom and then I'm just going to align it with the demarcation there and then I'm going to press this down. When we position it, you could see that it arrives just to the bottom here. Round the little corners a little bit. Now put the blue one, some glue stick. We want these two larger blue at the top and align it with your pencil mark. Double check. Place it on top of the door and it does match up where we want it. Use your pencil to apply some pressure. Now we can let these dry so they don't fall off. We're also going to cut one of these little extra strips. The regular long piece and the shorter side piece go inside the large frame. Remember, don't put black on the ends. So I'm just going to put some black over here. You don't have to do this if you don't have a black Sharpie, but it does make a huge difference when you blend the pieces together. I thought I had done black on the outsides here, but it looks like I did not do that. So I'm going to do the outside edge over here. Do you see how the black is a nice blend and then the white sticks out? And then on this side, we're going to start with the smaller strip. We're going to place it at the bottom. Remember, this is where the nails are. About the width of your thumb, just before the curve over here. And then this will wrap around and then we'll have the other one go over this one and go around and overlap here to finish. Put some glue on the sides. Don't put them on the front of your decals. Peel this. So you just want to start over here. And then we're going to bring it around like we did the other one. See, with the glue, we're able to play with it. Here, we're going to align this. When we push here, see how it's sticking out a little bit? You don't want to press and then pull this one off. You want to be pressing and lower this while you make the contact with the curve. You just want it to be flush with the door frame. Keep your finger here if you want it, and then it'll bring this down easier. So now we're just aligning this as straight as we can along the edge. Take your pencil, press it like this. Be very careful manipulating this also because your frame is so thin, you can break this really easy or bend it, which would be even worse, okay? So you can grab it a little more firm here because it's a bit thicker. 
but try not to grab from here when you're pressing or if you are pressing just do it very lightly don't put a lot of pressure i'm going to do that all the way around see how the pencil gives you a better blend here and now i'm going to put a little bit of glue just on the edge of this piece so that the overlay can stick to it go like this all the way around go inside the little holes if you have aero bubbles now where we started i'm going to put a little bit of glue on top of that too because that's where it's going to end peel it halfway to begin with so i'm going to overlap this half a centimeter now i'm going to continue along the inside and i'm going to make it go around this corner now it's a little tricky but you'll get used to it and if you make a mistake you can always reprint another piece of paper or cut one of these spare little strips that i gave you there peel more over here and then i'm going to go all the way across the top again be very delicate you don't want to break your frame at this point now i can finish peeling and i can align it with the edge so that it's parallel over here okay i'm just going to make sure that it's tight and snug at the curve i don't want to pull any of this side when i'm tightening this side try to make it flush with the front if you have little folds inside that's fine you can iron those out with your nail or the pencil later now i'm going to align this and it's going to start overlapping over here which is fine i'm just going to let it fall i can now take the pencil if you're scared of bending this lean it on the table and then you can press harder knowing that you're not going to break it we have no more black on the insides but the color of the door okay it's looking pretty good we'll let this dry a little bit before we hot glue all the pieces together now if you want your door to open you might not want to glue layer number two with layer number three you might just want to put double side tape or even just one drop of hot glue so you'll be able to remove it because then when you're looking at it closed like this if ever you want it open and have a death star hallway on the other side like when they escape that'll give you the option to do that what we do want is glue layer one to layer two because those will never come off so what we're going to do is we're just going to put one drop of hot glue on each corner then just tiny little drops on the sides like this remember this is your bottom so then we just align the pieces and everything should be perfect so this is layer one and two and then your layer three would be the rear of your closed door this will now fit through the back but we're not there yet okay let's grab our glue stick and apply it on the right side over here peel this is my bottom over here i'm just going to align this in the corner and then align it with the side align at the bottom excellent glue stick over here Peel this. I'm going to put Sharpie here. Overlap of the Sharpie. Then I'm going to just put this along the side. And then that goes on top of it. Perfect. Glue stick all the way across. Peel. A line at the bottom. Perfect. Then left top. I'm going to put my black Sharpie glue stick over here peel cross it perfect i should have done it before but i forgot so i'm going to do it now i'm just going to do the black sharpie on the edges now we're going to start putting the beams onto our wall number c on page three of your blueprints you're going to see the identification here w a b c d e f x y z place your pieces identified in the same pattern so w a b c d e f x y z these are represented over here you have the instructions right here that says beam top so you know that this is the top of your beam you'll notice that on the top of all of these beams 
are those little nail dirt pieces there that I created in Photoshop to give the illusion that you dropped stuff when the garbage fell, just like in the movie. So your first is going to go over here and then you're going to keep superimposing them as we go along. Now, if you look closely, you'll see that the beams don't reach with the edges. That's because you have the thickness of your walls over here that are glued flush to the wall C and then your beams now touch the edge over here. So in order to get this to match perfectly, what we're going to do first is hot glue your right wall to your C and then we'll be able to start placing the beams over here and then we'll be able to place the strips and then the other wall. Remember your bottom has these screws. The top of your piece has this pale emboss over here. It's going to fit like this, which means that we're going to flip it here for now and we're going to apply some drops of glue along this side edge over here. So you want to just put some little drops. You don't need that much. Now we're going to flip this. We're going to align it flush at the bottom and then we're going to lower it slowly you want it to be flush along the end over here. Flush at the top and then here flush at the bottom. Then you press down. It's at least 30 seconds. You can see that your beam illusions align with these gaps over here. That's because there's going to be an interlocking mechanism. Once it's cooled down, we're able to start applying beams. We want to start with W. We have W here, which means that it's going to go like this and it's going to be pressed against here now, leaving us a five centimeter gap on the left side. And then if you follow the guide over here on your C wall, it'll make this strip horizontal perfect and it's going to prevent your door from popping out, which is the reason we haven't inserted the door yet. Remember, beam top goes at the top. So I'm going to flip this just a few little drops. I don't need to put that many. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now I'm going to push it against this and then I'm going to let it fall aligned on the pattern and then press a little bit, let it cool down a little. Now the cool part on the top over here where I put those little dirt specks and screws and stuff like that, they now match with the rear ones over here. So it really looks like they fell on top of here and leaning against the rear as well. So everything lines up and matches up just like in the movie set. Next up, we'll do D, E and F because those lean against the right wall. The A, B, C's we'll do later once the left wall is applied. So for these ones, you'll see that you still have the identification. This is the D piece top. This, when leaned against here, the angle sticks out a little bit. So what we had cut here, this is going to be a brace to prevent your door frame from popping out also. One, one in the center, and one here. And then you're just going to press this against the wall, aligning it with your edge over here, just like that. Then piece number E, three little drops here as well. One, two, three. Press against the right wall first. Let it fall down. Align it with your little edge there. You'll see that it continues inside this groove there. F is the next piece. One, two, and three. Again, press it against the right wall first, then let it fall down. Do you see how these three notches now will prevent your door from falling all the way through? Next up is X beam top. This will go aligned like this and this one goes all the way across as well. A couple of drops over here and then a couple of drops. One, two, three. I'm just going to place that here, align that and then align this over here. Make sure that it's nice and flush. Do you see how the pieces are starting to come together? It's giving you that 3D look that you have in the movie set. If you're using that skin that I gave you in the decals, you'd have the door and this, and it would still look cool when you look at it through the camera, but this elevates it to another level. Y is next. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Press it against. 
then lower it in place. Make sure that this doesn't curve because see there's like a wobble that it wants to do over here. So you want to place it nice and perfect. And remember, hot glue dries fast. So make sure that you place it correctly at first because if not, you're going to have to pull it off and it'll tear all of the decals in the back and on the rear of the wall C there. Last but not least, Z. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, press that over here. Let it go down along the edge. Excellent. See how easy that was. Now we're going to place our strips in between the beams here and it'll give the 3D elevation on this wall. All we'll have to do is follow the instructions and the numbers you have here. So this is the number five. So you would just count one, two, three, four, five. And this one would fit right in between the two like this. Now find all your wall right indicators. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If we look at the blueprint, we see that they go in the same order. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You'll notice that all of your strips have arrows that point to the top and your identification over here. The decal skins of your right wall is going to be your guide on where you're going to place your strips. Each strip will go on each side of these beams that you placed over here and then follow along the horizontal guide over here of your skin. Strip number one is aligned flush at the bottom and on the left here and pressed against the wall C obviously. So I'll do a dry fitting. You might have to put a little bit of pressure in order to get it to be flush over here. But the important thing is that it's flush here for the floor. One, two, three drops. Align it, flush at the bottom flush over here. Keep some pressure on it until the hot glue cools down a little bit. See how the alignment of those screws and dirt that I did, they go on the top over here and then continue on the back wall. So it gives you the illusion that they fell and are leaning against this in the corner. Strip number two and you'll see that you'll just align it over here like this. One, two, three. In between. Align it and then let it go down. Put a bit of pressure to make it flush over here and then let it cool down a little. Okay, let's do another time lapse. This is the fun part because all of the tedious wrapping of the skins and cutting the foam core and all that is all done and now it's just applying all of the pieces to the walls, getting us that 3D look. Last but not least, our strip number eight, which has the exposed foam core here because this is the ceiling area. So one, two, three, place it here. Align flush at the edge, which it is. Make sure it's aligned at the bottom, which it should match anyhow. Keep it pressed 10, 15 seconds. Our right wall is now complete with all of the strips positioned in between the cracks of the strips like the movie set. So now what we want to do is apply your left wall over here and then we'll be able to put the strips onto this side as well. We're going to put a bit of hot glue along the 0.5 centimeter edge which represents the thickness of your foam core over here. Do a dry run. Make sure that everything aligns properly at the top over here, at the bottom. Most important, we want it flush over here with the side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one little one at the top there. Remember, highlight goes at the top. Align this with the edge and then lower it in place. Flush at the top. Flush at the bottom. Keep this pressed down until the hot glue cools down. Because of the weight that we have on this wall now, I don't want to just lean this to apply the strips like we did the other side because it might tilt over and then tear all the glue over here which would rip your decal. So what we're going to do is we're just going to strengthen it by adding our floor right away. So I'm just putting some hot glue in between the two pieces there. Now I'm aligning this on the corner and then letting it fall all the way down. Flush over here and flush here at the front. 
Keep that pressed until it cools down 10-15 seconds. Once the glue starts to cool down, you can scrape it like this and it'll make little snots that you can throw away. Now we can move to this side. Lift this slightly. I just need a few drops. A line in the front like this. Let it fall down. Press down a little bit with your finger and then make sure that it's flush here. That little gap in the back is normal. Then you put more pressure so that the glue touches all the way across. Then you can scrape off any excess glue. Now, do you see the gap over here? We're just gonna run a bead of hot glue along here. Keep some pressure at the top. Okay, with our floor in place, our trash compactor diorama is pretty stable now. So when I go to place it like this, in order to apply these strips over here, I'm not gonna fear that this thing is gonna collapse and detach at the back of the wall over here. Beam top A goes this way, right there. Little drop of glue over here, center three. Press it against that wall and then align it with your guide. And it's normal that your little angle cut sticks out. You'll see that it aligns perfectly with this groove over here. B next, three little things of glue. Press it against the wall, align it, and then keep some pressure on it. Last but not least, number C. One, two, three. Press it against that wall, align it with your guide. Now all our beams are along our wall C. Okay, sort them all out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's do another time lapse. It took me a couple of weeks to do these graphics because I was trying to match exactly the same dripping and the oil spots and the dirt spots as on the movie set. So I think that this will be one of the most accurate trash compactor decals that you'll find online. What do you think? We're almost done. What's missing? The door. <laughs> now remember what I said earlier that you can have your door closed or open. So in order to allow you to have that option, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a little bit of tape here on the back. If you want it fully closed, you could put some drops of hot glue and then just glue it tight. Take a piece of tape like this, roll it around itself till it touches. You must know this technique, how to get yourself a double side sticky tape like this. Then I'm just gonna place it over here on the top. Lay it as flat as you can by stretching it out. This way I'll be able to remove the door very easily if I decide to do that. Fold this over. Place it flush like this and you're just gonna let it fall. My door is now complete. Door top with the lights, bottom. We're just going to align it with the frame. You don't even have to glue this part. You'll see that the layer one thickness will go completely inside like this, exposing only layer two and three. Push down on this side so that layer one goes inside on this side as well. Put one hand at the bottom there, slowly press down and our door frame is in place. How cool is that? See how your strips and your beams interconnect and give it a really cool 3D look, just like the movie set, as opposed to if you were doing it just flat label illusions. Now, if you happen to see any light peeking through on the frames, because your contact here isn't 100%, you can just put a sheet of black poster board to cut any light that would be coming through here. Now, if you wanted to stop here, you could. You can just place it like this next to your other Death Star walls. However, I want to put some lights to light up this area because it seems very dark. And I'm going to put those side beams over here in order to make it fit with the rest of Mega Death Star diorama to look like a cross section. But these are optional. You don't need to do this part. Okay, I'm gonna need a sheet of tracing paper. So you want a pristine sheet with no folds or wrinkles. I want to apply my frame onto my sheet like this because this is gonna diffuse my light. Okay, I want glue stick all the way around. Now I'm gonna turn this around, lay it on top like this, and I'm gonna press down evenly on the four sides. 
What I want to do now is I need to put some pressure here and carefully with a sharp blade just trim the sides of the paper. Now I have my frame. Flip it upside down. Now I have my side pieces and then these will go in between. I will first hot glue over here and align it flush. Some hot glue along the spine like this. Align it at the corner, then let it fall. Flush on the side over here. Now I'm gonna want to take this one. I'm gonna align it, pushing this against the end over here and aligning it flush here. And I should have a 0.5 sticking out over here for me to apply this piece later on. Put a little bit of glue here and then along here, align it here in the corner. So I'm pushing here to put pressure there. Flush here, pushing down. Once the glue starts cooling down, wipe off any glue gloves that you see. Now for this side, we're going to do the same thing. Apply it like that. A little bit of glue over here. Then a long strip along here. Align it. Press down. Flush. Put pressure on here so that the two pieces stick together. Now my last piece should fit, and it does. Some glue over here, a little bit of glue there, and a little bit here. Align this, flush. Okay, be careful not to burn yourself. Press down, make sure you're flush here. Press down here to make sure you have contact. We have our little shadow box here. You have no folds or creases over here, and underneath this is what you're gonna be seeing. So our ceiling is gonna go on top like this. It's gonna be aligned flush in the front and it'll stick out a little bit in the back. Before we close the ceiling and glue this in place, I wanna just do a demarcation and this is what I'm gonna cut out over here in order to pass the lights in and it'll go around like this and then go out. You don't want this to go all the way to the bottom because it'll make it too flimsy. You only need it to be the height of your LED strip to be able to poke it in and out. Let's extend our blade as far as we can. When I'm pressing down, I'm going to move it forward at the same time as it lowers. Just like this. And then stop. Remove it. Now for the other side. Going down and stop. Ooh, I don't like that sound. And we're just going to cut the bottom out there. Just like this. Now my LED strips can fit inside and out like that. Now I need to measure how long I need in order to go all the way around the frame. But since this is very fragile, especially once the paper is there, I don't want to play around with this until I have to glue it. So I'm going to use my top over here. You have these little cutting guides over here. So say if I leave seven, okay, then if I move this here like that, then I continue along here. And then here, then I have all this left over. I'll take another seven. Cut just along the scissor line there. There is self-adhesive tape here on the rear of the LEDs. So this is what I'm going to be using to attach to the inside of my ceiling frame. Now you don't want the light to be touching your paper, you might be seeing the light sources, like the dots from the LEDs. So you want to place your LED strip as close as you can to the top. So let us start with the seven that I said. Put a little dot here. Then I know that this is where it'll align with the exit. On the opposite side of my dot is where I want to start peeling. Cut along here. Push this back. I don't want any of this side to be sticky. So I'm going to peel a little bit. If you look at the blueprints on page one, you'll see that the light, I have it going from here, starting this way and wrapping all the way around. Your dot is a good reference, but you don't want the LED to be in a corner where it's going to fold or try to bend, okay? Because that'll damage the unit. I'm going to take this and I'm just going to lightly press it here. Then I'm going to peel some more. Oh, hold on, I'm trying to, I'm trying to work backwards with my hands so that you can see at this angle there. It's not very useful or handy for me, but okay. Then I want to pull this as close to the top 
until you get to the corner. I'm just going to press this flat like this. When you get to the corner, you leave a little angle like this. Put my finger here, peel some more, stretch this, apply it towards the top, press it against the wall. If you're getting tangled with all of this mess there, you can tear the excess off and throw that away. Try to pull at the same time as you align up and down. When I get to the outside over here, I don't want stickiness on this either. I'm going to peel till I reach my finger, which would be here. I'm just going to tear this off. So now it'll expose only what's going to be inside and sticky. Now we can place this. And try to put it towards the outside. You don't want hot glue going on the LED and risking damaging the electronics. Align flush in the front, press down a little bit, and over here it should be flush, which it is. Put some pressure until the glue cools down. Now our ceiling frame is pretty solid. It's not going to collapse on itself. However, do you hear that? This being tracing paper, it remains very, very fragile. Let's try it on for size. Once we glue this in place, it's going to prevent your walls from wobbling even more. Okay, let's put some hot glue over here. I'm going to lift this. I'm going to align it flush in the front, just like that. More importantly, I want it flush over here. Now put some pressure, but only in this area there. Don't put pressure here. Let's just do this until the glue cools down. Turn it this way, lift this. I'm going to keep my finger underneath here. Just a few little drops closer to the outside. I don't want glue going inside, destroying all the nice work that we did. Align it with the corner here and then lower it. Do you see how it's perfectly flush here now? And then this is flush all the way across here too. Now you can put pressure until the glue cools down. So our ceiling looks like this now. Okay, let's flip this upside down. So I'm pressing down at the top and I'm just putting one, two, three little globs. Now while the ceiling dries, I have to prepare the optional side panels left and right for gluing onto the walls. And in order to do that, if you look at your page two of your blueprints, you'll see over here that I have to trim a 0.5 centimeter, which is the thickness of the foam core, along the edges over here in order to get these little angle cuts so that this will superimpose on top of the thickness of the wall and that way it'll give you a nice flush corner. Now you probably don't understand what I'm talking about, but you will once I show you what's happening. First thing is to identify your right. Over here is where we do our groove, which is this side over here. Put your foam core flush along the side here. Do a mark over here, another pencil mark here. Do you see there's an exact thickness of the foam core on the edge? Draw a line. This is the right side. Now on the left side, I need the strip to be over here, which is on this side. A line flush. Make a line, a line flush, make a line. Make sure you have a new blade because you don't want to have imperfections in this. With the blade extended at maximum, I'm going to leave it as close to the ground as I can. I don't want to go like this because then I might scratch the front, okay? And I don't want to do that. Put a bit of pressure and you want to pierce this top foam core skin, but you're pressing very, very lightly because you don't want it to go all the way to the bottom. Then you go again, slowly. You'll get a feel for it the more you do of these. Okay, one more time. Now you can flip it. You could see that there's no cut on this side. The cut is only all the way to here. Now's the tricky part. You have to sandwich your X-Acto blade in between where we put the decal and where the styrofoam starts. So you want to go in like this and carefully go down. And you're going to have to do this multiple times slowly until you feel the cut. And then you'll know when you reach this area that you did because now it starts to separate. And see how you have that L shape I showed you on the blueprint? Now we need to do it all the way across to the end. 
And maybe you guys have a better trick in order to do this than the way that I do it, but this is how I learned. This popped out like this. Now let's see if the rest pops out. There's a little snag over here that you could see. It could be in the back as well. I'm just going to try cutting it a little bit more. There we go. You want to remove your strip like this so that you get a nice L over here all the way across. See how you get a nice connection of your decals on both sides. You don't have the thickness that you would have if you didn't cut the recess over here. So let's do the same thing on this one. We have the nice perfect L shape over here. Now let me explain how these grooves fit onto your walls. The exposed area here that you have on your main left and right walls, that's going to be hidden now by this groove. And what's going to remain exposed is your strips over here. First thing I'm going to do is just put a little bit of glue all the way down. Align the corner here, then just let this go down. What we want to make sure is that it's flush and pressed down against the foam core side there. We can always add more glue here if we need later. Let's apply this side now. Just a little bit of glue. Align it at the bottom. Press it in. All contact flat. See it gives us a cut through section. Now the foot part goes along the bottom here. Apply a little bit of glue here and then from underneath because I don't want to damage the front of the decal. Here like this and then the line. Bring this up. Flush at the bottom here. Flush over here. Hot glue. One little drop of hot glue in the front and then another one over here. Align this here. Flush over here. Flush at the bottom here. Now it might look silly on its own like this, but once you're going to place it inside with the other Death Star pieces, it's going to make sense to have these side panels over here. Now the last thing we have to do is place our little top beam connector, which will give us the illusion of the cross sections. Put some glue stick over here. Make sure it goes all across the edges. You'll be able to pick it up like this, like a suction cup. Grab the sides. Now be careful because your fingers are going to get very sticky and dirty on this. I'm just going to align it flush at the top, left and right. Press it into place. If your fingers have glue stick on it, don't do that. Don't press against this with dirty fingers because you're going to smudge all of the decals. So I'm flush here. I'll be able to add another level on top of this at some point. And here we go. This is what it looks like and your ceiling inside. Now, what's missing? Figures. Okay, let's go get them. Now, my dimensions for the trash compactor were based on the 2002 Power of the Force action figure 2-pack. So this is two sections that fit together to do the diorama. It also came with the little uh, Dioniga figure over here, but we don't need this for now. If you don't have it, you could order it on eBay still. I've seen some right now for about $99, so it is expensive. If you have regular figures, what you can do is just do greeblies, all kinds of like little pieces of foam, screws, all kinds of little bits of plastic, anything that you have, you can just toss like the real trash compactor and then just place your figures in it and it'll look like they're sinking inside the movie set. All I did was add two layers of foam core on each side here to elevate this a little bit more so that it reaches the door in the back at the height that you see in the movie. And you slide it in and then you'd place Chewbacca against the door like this. You see what I was talking about where now it's all dark. That's why we put a light. I'm going to flick the switch. Are you ready? I haven't seen it yet. So let's see. Let's see if it works or if it's a disaster. The light has a bluish tint because it's not a warm light. It's a cold light. I could dim the intensity. And that comes closer to the color of the decals and you're seeing the figures better than when it's off. I don't know. What do you guys do? You like it with the lights off or with the lights on? 
the last last thing that we can do is at the bottom here is take this little bottom from the poster board and we can glue it over here and that would give you the illusion that it's part of the inside and it would hide your height of the trash over here and if you were to put greeblies instead this would act sort of like as a bathtub and it would keep things from falling out so this might be a, a good way to go about that. Remember how I told you not to glue the ceiling all the way around for emergencies? Well, guess what? <laughs> I really wasn't happy with that bluish LED light, so I got another strip that allows for color lighting so that I'll be able to play around and hopefully get a color that will suit the brown dirt of the diorama better than that bluish light that was really bugging me. So now I'm just gonna put some more glue, reapply this, just let it fall, just like that. This one has a little color, little remote here. So let's turn it on and cycle through the colors. Oh, I was pressing off. <laughs> there we go. Oh my God. Okay, so that's white. That's almost as bad as that other color. You see all the bluish from it is very strange. Okay, so let's go to red. Okay, well, that's better than white, but red looks a little too much like they're in hell, but it's better. Green, obviously, no. Uh, blue, it's like purple. I don't think that works well for that. Let's go to yellow. Yellow it looks too greenish. All these colors, they're remote. Look at this. I'm hitting purple and it comes out blue. So these lights from Dollar Store are not uh, the most accurate, I can tell you that. Okay. This is like a purplish, that doesn't work. I'm gonna stick to the reds. So here's orange. No, it looks more greenish, doesn't it? Oh, and the camera seems to flicker, it doesn't like that. Red, oh, this is a bit better. Oh, this one so far is the best one. This orange yellow. And then this is full red, which is too red, but this one, works but it flickers i'm seeing it in the monitor it's not looking as well but look at the difference do you see maybe if i get close up in person it looks really nice i'm going to try to zoom in yeah it's even worse okay so that doesn't translate well for the camera you have to trust me that it looks really nice in person it does make a difference Okay, so you want to build the diorama without having to use the stickers because you rather paint instead. Using latex paint from the art store, okay, you can use these and have some fun getting dirty this way if you prefer. Now you can use a mixture of like whites, black, a little bit of red, and then some burnt umber brown. As long as it becomes dirty that's what you want so it's a perfect first test for first time painters as well so i just want to take a little bit of brown grab yourself a little lid like this i'm just going to shake it put some brown maybe a little bit of black maybe a little bit of red it's up to you play around what we want to do is do a first coat to cover the foam core you don't want to put too much paint on foam core because the foam core will get wet and buckle. Start in the creases, find yourself a zones, and you just want to cover all of your foam core styrofoam there. Don't worry about the paint streaks. You're going to be fixing that with your sponge later. Now, painting is always very artistic, so there's no real one way only to do it. You let yourself do it the way that you become happy. Add some more brown. This time I'm gonna add some white because I wanna make it a bit paler. Is the bottle dry? Oh, there we go, okay. You want just a little, not too much. You can always add more. I wanna put maybe a bit more red to make some rusty color. Mix this. 
See, so I get a different color than I had before. If you don't like this color, you can always add more white or more black, more brown. Now for this part, what I like to do is grab these little sponges that you find at the dollar store. Now I want to do highlights with the prickly part. So I'm going to dip it here, but this is too much. See, now you're getting two tones and it's starting to look more like the movie set. Keep turning your sponge so that it's not always pressing in the same spot. When you're happy with the result, then that's when you know you're doing it right. Like Bob Ross used to say, put little happy trees and things. Now I want a rusty kind of color, so I'm going to put red and some black. Now also remember in the Death Star, you have trash that falls from the top to the bottom. You could take a smaller brush like this, dab it in the darker red, just at the top, like if it was hitting the top, like falling down, like this. If you want really nice drips, go with your sponge on the tops. Put some more of this lighter color. Now I want to have black drips, like the oil that's leaking from the tops. Now I want to put a little bit of water. Now I'm going to put some black. You want to dilute your black a lot because you want it to drip like if it was crying. Before you do it on your real color, you can do some tests on some scrap pieces of foam core. See how it falls like a tear? That's what you want. Then you take more black water. Don't paint down. You could, but it won't look as nice. You can retap at the same area and the water will follow kind of where it was, but because it's transparent, it's going to do two tones like you do in a Tatooine house and it's going to look nicer. I'm going to dip my brush and let's do the first one. Let's put it here. See how it falls? And then you do it again. Okay, there's no place that you need to have it specifically. Then you can grab your Scott towel, wipe away some of the excess. What you want to do is have layers and layers and layers. That's what's going to make it look cool. When it dries, it'll dry a little bit paler there. And you don't want them all the same size. That's what makes it cool. You just let it fall and work its magic. See, just like that. Just let it cry. Now, if you think it's too dark, you can always go with your sponge technique. And that's all there is to it. All you have to do is repeat on every single surface that you have inside your diorama. So you can decide to paint or use the decals. That's the fun thing of this build. Either way, it's going to look really nice. And there you have it. It turned out really, really nice. I hope that it's going to inspire you to build your own. I can't wait to see it. Even if you don't have the 2002 figures, I'm going to be curious to see what it looks like when you build your own version and put other action figures, different action figures in it and add greeblies and different things like that to add, make the look of the floating water debris and all the stuff like that. If you like the video, please subscribe if you haven't already. I really appreciate it. And ring the bell if you want to be notified for upcoming videos and tutorials like the one you just watched today. If you build stuff at home, make sure to send me your pictures at dioramaworkshop.com at gmail.com so we can put them in the visitor's gallery. Okay, well, I think that's it for now. Frank Diorio, ciao. See you later. Thanks for watching Diorama Workshop. If you want to see the entire list of currently available Diorama build blueprints, decals, and tutorials, visit my website's Speed Index menu page. If you want to interact with me, you can find and follow me on these social media platforms. If you have a question about this video or any past Star Wars Celebration Diorama booth builds, send me an email at dioramaworkshop.com at gmail.com. If you enjoyed this video, you now have access to the Super Thanks button, which allows you to send a one-time donation that helps support Diorama Workshop future builds and tutorials. If you want to encourage my website and channel long-term, you can now become a patron. Your support will help purchasing more materials for future builds and tutorials. Visit Patreon Diorama Workshop for more information. If you are interested in Diorama Workshop collectibles, you can now purchase all kinds of cool merch in the Diorama Workshop Spread Shop store. If you want to build your own dioramas at home, make sure to visit the Diorio Dioramas Etsy shop, where you can purchase and download all of the decals and blueprints, Cricut, SVGs, and digital artwork at reasonable prices. And if you're a Patreon member, you'll receive some really cool discounts on all of the items on sale.
If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, share, tell your friends and social media groups to check it out. You can see more about this build and two decades of Star Wars Celebration construction. Simply click on the link to warp to DioramaWorkshop.com, the official Star Wars Celebration Diorama Builders booth website.